Wear and tear aside, the United States and China are developing jets that can fly forever, literally. Impossible as this sounds, the basis of the technologies involved have actually been around for millions of years, and you can replicate them in your college lab. Watch to the end to find out how. In this video, the US and China will once again push Russia aside, going head to head for some bragging rights and a chance to put a smile on Greta Thunberg's face, seeing as both technologies share her passion for taking the fight to climate change. US Air Engine Fuel is commonly known as liquid gold and for good reason. Without it, the US Air Force, for instance, becomes the ground force unable to take to the skies to execute air superiority and all the strategic roundtable talk that goes on at the Pentagon. But there is a problem with this liquid gold. It is awfully limited in supply, and so its price graphs keep pointing upwards, making it more expensive by the minute. The Air Force Deputy Assistant Secretary, Roberto Guerrero, shed more light on this inflationary disaster when he revealed that the Air Force had proposed $8.2 billion for fuel alone in the 2022 fiscal year budget, and as expected, jaws were dropped. So before critics could fashion their conspiracy theories, Mr. Roberto explained further that this proposed budget was to cater to the roughly 800,000 sorties that the US Air Force makes each year. And that does add up, seeing as the Lockheed Martin F-35 fighter jet alone burns over $40,000 in fuel every hour of flight which means it is expected to burn $352 million in fuel over its planned 8,000-hour lifespan, and that's for a single jet alone. Now, surely Lockheed Martin is making efforts to bring these numbers down, but even an almost impossible 50% cost per hour flight reduction would still not qualify the F-35 as economical. So instead of trying to edit the fighter and potentially reduce its lethality, the US shifted its focus to fixing the fuel. A cheaper type of fuel with a similar ability to push jets past the speed barrier multiple times over had become a need. And this is where a chemical technology company, known as 12, comes into play. 12 was founded in 2015 by Dr. Kendra Kuhl, Dr. Itosha Cave, and Nicholas Flanders. The US Air Force entered into a contract with them in 2020 to fix their fuel-related snag, which would eventually prove to be a genius move. After months of mixing chemicals and transforming carbon into everything but diamond, the E-Jet fuel was born, a carbon-neutral fuel that promises to revolutionize the aviation industry forever. The E-Jet is produced entirely out of the air via a production process that can be compacted into a portable, oven-ready system. So the Air Force would have the ability to produce fuel automatically anywhere air is available, which is literally anywhere in the world. This means they would be self-sustainable wherever, in whatever terrain, and for however long, without sacrificing the supersonic capabilities of their jets, which is just what the doctor ordered. So how does making fuel from air work exactly? How does it work? 12's air-to-fuel conversion process is spectacular, but in no way a new concept. The science behind it is known as fischer tropsch synthesis, here, carbon dioxide and water from the atmosphere are electrified using solar energy to extract carbon and hydrogen respectively. These two elements then react together in the presence of a catalyst to speed up the reaction. The resulting compound is refined into fossil-free, carbon-neutral e-jet fuel. This carbon transformation process, commonly referred to as industrial photosynthesis, shares a striking resemblance to photosynthesis in plants which has been around since the beginning of time. For the E-Jet to cement its place in Aviation Hall of Fame, though, it must battle for the tough spot with battery-powered flights. But seeing as battery-powered flights are only viable for shorter distances, it might not be much of a battle after all. However, it isn't all rosy for the E-Jet either. There is still the issue of sourcing water. As we recall, water is required in its production process, but it isn't as readily available as air. Or is it? 12 believes it can be, as the base components of water can be found in the air also. So in theory, water can be extracted from the atmosphere, which 12 proved in August of 2021 when they unveiled the first batch of the E-Jet. 
The Air Force was beyond pleased with the company as the E-Jet was tested to be compatible with current jet engines. As a result, the Air Force has continued to endorse 12 and push for scaling E-Jet production to satisfy actual operational demands. And with the main components, air, water, and sunlight, being the most abundant substances on Earth, there is enough optimism to go around when it comes to scalability. In terms of practicality, the E-Jet does bag the prize too. All respect to Elon Musk, but completely switching to electric land or air vehicles would equate to rendering over a billion combustion machines useless. On paper, it would be far more economical to fix the fuel to not only stop carbon emissions, but also extract already existent carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Remember, carbon dioxide is the main culprit behind climate change, and stopping its emission doesn't magically make it disappear from the sky. It must be extracted to truly address climate change, which is what trees currently do, but at an incredibly slow pace. According to 12, their carbon transformation process, once scaled up, would have the same carbon dioxide reducing power as 120 billion trees. Now that's more like it. And commercial airlines are looking to play a role too in taking the world green. If anything, they're eager to stop their planes from being carbon dioxide delivery vehicles. But the E-Jet isn't necessarily their top option though. 7,000 miles away in China, there's an engine being developed that produces its own carbon-neutral fuel while in operation. So in theory, jets powered by this engine might never need to land once they take to the skies, especially if they're unmanned. This engine is known as the Chinese Plasma Engine. Chinese Plasma Engine Researchers from the Wuhan University in China have a very different approach to producing fuel from air, and it's just as revolutionary. Their plasma engine revolves around a rather ingenious on-the-go fuel brewing process. Plasma is a form of electricity, and it is the fourth state of matter, like solid, liquid, and gas, but the least popular of them. However, it is by far the most abundant state of matter in the solar system, with the sun being an entire planet of it. So, replicating the sun by producing superheated plasma could fabricate artificial solar energy, which then concentrated in a single direction could induce enough thrust to power jets, planes, and satellites. This is what the Wuhan researchers seek to exploit. They ionize compressed air by running it past electrodes, and then force the air along a specially designed quartz tube. The result of this process is a low temperature plasma. But low temperature plasma is meek, weak, gentle, and not too pushy, which is the exact opposite of what you want in a jet engine. But there's an easy fix for that. The scientists intersect the quartz tube containing the plasma with a waveguide full of magnetron generated microwaves. Once these microwaves meet the plasma, boom, the plasma goes crazy, oscillating uncontrollably, hitting the walls of the engine and pushing it forward to provide thrust. However, there is one drawback that must be figured out. Accompanied by the produced fuel is about a thousand degrees Celsius of heat, which is about a fifth of the temperature of the surface of the sun. Too much heat for almost any engine housing to endure. Hopefully, for the sake of the world, the Wuhan researchers come up with a remedy for this as their plasma engine is one of great potential. It's already proven to work on a small scale by lifting a one kilogram ball over a quartz tube with a diameter of 24 millimeters. Confusing numbers, maybe, but just know that it works. And once scaled up, it could actually provide about the same amount of thrust as the current jet engines in operation today. Zhao Tang, the lead researcher of the plasma engine and a professor of Wuhan University, shared that the motivation behind the research is its environmental benefit. He continues that since the engine eliminates the need for fossil fuel, carbon emission becomes a thing of the past along with global warming and the convoy of other greenhouse effects. However, this motivation might soon take a back seat behind the engine's potential for military applications, seeing as the regenerative nature of the engine's fuel means military aircraft could now do everything for longer, which is amazing news in terms of air superiority. We now live in a world where Wuhan researchers are producing matter that didn't previously exist while 12 is doing a number, quite literally, on non-renewable fossil fuels before they face certain extinction. This makes it quite a daunting task to pick a side. China reinventing the engine, or the United States reinventing the fuel? Which option would you go for? 
kindly share your pick in the comment section down below. And if you like these green approaches to aviation, kindly show it by liking this video. So click thumbs up on the button below and if you're interested in being up to date with everything tech around the world, subscribe to this channel. And that'll be all for this video. Thanks for watching.